Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at Firox. Now Firox used to be called Rage 3D once upon a time. This is the preeminent Rust-based game engine with an editor. There are two major Rust game engines out there right now. There is Firox, and there is Bevy. Now Firox, again, is known for the editor, and there was a lot that was just updated. Firox just released uh, version uh, 0.34, and there is quite a bit to like in this particular release. So you can see, this is the editor in question. Obviously, it is your typical place for uh, creating your game logic. So for example here, we have this node in the game world, and I'll illustrate one of the new features that has been added, and that is this. So right now, what you can do is actually attach scripts, using the Rust language, to an object. Object. But what you can now actually do, and I don't know if it'll, when it's empty, so here, for example, I could come in and say, all right, this is a player, and then I could set up a variety of settings for particular player scripts. So your games in uh, Firox are essentially plugins that are embedded in, and then you can use Rust programming language for adding actual game logic. But what you can now actually do is add multiple scripts per object. So this is going to make it very flexible in terms of what you can actually do. Uh, so you can organize your code in a much better way instead of having, you know, uh, multiple hits here. So you see here, I now have a second script attached to this guy. Another neat new feature that they've added in this particular release is hot reloads. You do not have to completely rebuild your project to go ahead and check things out. On top of that, there have been a number of just improvements across the board with the editor. Some things just for stylizing it, making it look a little bit nicer on the whole. We now get automatically generated previews of the things that we're looking at. So for example, the levels, you can see a, a rendering of what the level would look like, 3D models, and then when it comes to music, you can actually see a waveform of the music object that you are actually previewing. So you've got much nicer preview of assets and entities you are using in your game world. So there's actually quite a bit of nice stuff in this particular release. On top of that, we also have this now. Uh, so you've got this export projects. So you can do quick, almost one-click builds uh, for a variety of different platforms. In this case, I can do web, PC, PC and Android. I think if I was on Mac, obviously I could do Mac as well. Uh, so yeah, that is kind of the, the highlight features of this release. There's a lot more to it. We'll get to those in the release notes in just a second. Uh, first, a quick overview of Firox itself. This is the Firox homepage, firox.rs. Uh, you see in terms of highlight features, first class 2D and 3D support, advanced 2D and 3D physics, uh, multi-platform, so Windows, Linux, Mac OS, as well as web. Uh, you saw the, one of the other features that they've added somewhat recently, and you saw the export template there. There is Android support. I believe iOS is being worked on as well. Uh, high quality flexible renderer, advanced user interface, including one of the new features that they actually added that I didn't cover up that's very useful for user interface, is now you can actually drag drag and drop and reorientate uh, entities just basically like this. So if it made sense on a, on a UI level for something to be in front of something else, you can now uh, edit it and change it using just drag and drop, which actually is another nice improvement here. Advanced UI uh, plugins and scripting. So you write your game completely in Rust while being able to run it in the editor, extend functionality of the engine using custom plugins. And then of course this release adds that hot reload. We'll get back to that in just a second. A high quality binaural sound system, powerful animation system, full scene graph. And the big thing about Firox obviously is the editor. Now, one thing you want to know about Firox, if you want to go ahead and check it out, again, firox.rs, uh, there is a book project out there that will get you up and running with Firox, teach you what you need to know, uh, which is a nice thing. On top of that, there's also a variety of demo projects to get you up and going, and I will show you where I got the one that I'm showcasing today in just a second. So, in terms of Firox Engine 0.34 release, what do we have? Well, the big one is obviously hot code reloading. Uh, so, again, that's you can make changes to your scripts without having to do a complete rebuild cycle. Uh, it's somewhat involved in how you go about doing it, but the instructions are all available here. Uh, they have made a variety of improvements to the editor, uh, in both in looks and usability. And so the nice one I, I talked about earlier on is you can now have multiple script attached to a single object. That opens up, obviously, a huge number of new options there. Instead of having to basically organize your scripts around the scenes, you can organize your scripts however the hell you want and attach multiples to the same object. Uh, you've got a project exporter. I showed you that very quickly there for exporting to a variety different platforms. Uh, asset preview generation, so your models and your waveforms, etc., all have a preview image. So it makes it much easier, like basically thumbnails, works with, makes life nice that way. Another big difference here is GLTF support was added. In my humble opinion, uh, GLTF should be the lingua franca for data interchange for open source game engines, uh, just because it's sort of the open source engine uh, file format, interchange format, uh, unlike, let's say, FBX, which Autodesk basically owns. Uh, so it's nice to see GLTF 
see how support was added there. Uh, support for static and dynamic batching. Again, another big deal. You see here, it's just done by the batching mode down there. Should be able to get some performance improvements out of that as a result. You can now have support for multiple UI instances. I don't actually know the use case for this, but uh, you may. Uh, keyboard navigation. Uh, framework did not support keyboard navigation, which is quite annoying since keyboard navigation can save heaps of times when doing repetitive actions. Now the Firefox UI supports various keyboard navigation techniques, so like tabbing between numbers and so on, moving up and down in arrows. Obviously a big addition there. Uh, animation UI, um, so you can see a graph timeline of it, so the color changing here. You can do a preview of your animation, uh, states that you can switch between, and you can see a preview of them in action. Uh, the grid, uh, game scenes now have a O, X, Z oriented grid. Each square has a one meter in size. It can be used for grid snapping. Uh, grid can be turned on and off in the editor settings. There have been improvements to the animation editor as well. Um, and then UI prefabs. So UI system now supports prefabs, which allows you to put common UI widgets into separate UI scenes and use it in other scenes. Uh, so you can see here with where the button. I think each of the buttons was pulled in from a different scene in this particular scenario. Adaptive scroll bar. Um, so scroll bar thumb size has now changed its size according to the content size. Previously it had a fixed size. Uh, world viewer. Uh, so world viewer is now able to reorder items. That's what I showcased earlier on. Useful obviously for UI type things where it's orientation based inside of another controller. But you can now do basically drag and drop reorg in the world builder uh, and so on and so forth. So grid snapping, quick access panel, rendering statistics panel, you can now show rendering statistics in a separate dockable panel. Uh, scene preview, you can now switch between shaded and wireframe rendering modes directly from the scene previewer. That is a little button up here, like so. So it's just like general uh, improvements in time over time uh, for a variety of different things. So asset browser performance was improved. Uh, mesh control panel pops up now when you're dealing with various different meshes. Panel opens automatically when a mesh node is selected. Uh, and then we've got a variety of other changes here as well, smaller things in this release. So you actually got quite a bit in this release, a lot of uh, editor overhauls, uh, but then code reloading, GLTF, um, you've got the uh, improvements across the board to the editor, multi-scripting support, the uh, easy project export directly from the editor, thumbnail previews, and so on, static dynamic batching. Big update for sure. So if you're using Firefox, uh, there is a lot of reasons to jump up to this particular version. Uh, if you're evaluating Firefox, well, the biggest thing going for it is this is an open source game engine with a solid community behind it with a full 3D editor. It really comes down to if you want to use Rust and you want to develop a game, a 3D game specifically, you're going to either choose Firefox or um, Bevy. And Bevy is more uh, code focused framework. They're going to be building an editor in the near future. Firefox basically started with the editor concept and built out from there. So it's two different approaches, two things. But as you saw, Firefox has a nice mature editor going on with a number of really nice uh, improvements in this particular release, especially things that you would have thought would have been there all along, like the number key stuff. Uh, but again, a nice release in this regard. And then of course, we have uh, the station demo that I used here. So if you're wondering how I got this project, it's Station Lapitus or Iapetus, I'm not sure if that's an L or an I, uh, but basically it, it's uh, the largest demo project out there. It's a third person shooter in development stage, kind of showcases you. Uh, it gives you a three level to play around with if you just wanna you know, check the editor out. Uh, really simple to get up and going, basically just do this, clone Firefox into a directory and then the same hierarchy level, so not underneath it, but at the same level, clone down the, oh, so it is an I, uh, station Iapetus and then CD into the station and then just run this command. By the way, if you run, run the editor, you're gonna use uh, there's a command for basically bringing up the editor uh, directly there as well. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So this, by the way, is a GNU GPL v3 license. And Firefox itself is under the MIT license, also fully open source. You can grab the code out there. So you want to go ahead and check out Firefox. It's super simple, basically. Just clone this repository, do a cargo run. As long as you have the Rust tool chain installed on your computer, you're good. You're good to go. Uh, and there's a bunch of demos built into it. Uh, so a number of things in the examples folder there. Uh, you'll also find if you come back here to the Firefox engine repository, uh, you will find a collection of demo projects in the demo project. Just git clone this one and go ahead and run it. A number of things. So if you want to do like a 2D platformer style game, uh, there is a 2D platformer demo as an example. So a lot of stuff to get you up and running with Firefox. There is the book out there as well. It also kind of walks you into it. So if you're looking at doing game development using Rust, the two leaders in the ecosystem, Firefox and Bevy. Firefox, big update, 0.34. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.